One of the biggest hacks in building wealth is through our superannuation, our retirement fund. In this video, I'm gonna show a couple of cases of how we can actually supercharge our super to actually earn a living off that money in say 30 or 40 years versus what most people will do and not actually take advantage of this, which means they live under the poverty line. If you're interested, keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Occasionally, I'll talk about a retirement fund and how you can really supercharge it to actually make some gains later on. Now, this is definitely not one of those videos where you go, oh my God, it's gonna 100X and 10X in like 10 years and I can totally retire. No, this is a video which will explain sort of the pros and cons of looking at different assets, taking a bit more accountability of your finances when it comes to your super and your retirement fund and what that could potentially look like in 20 to 30 years. There's far too many people, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, are not even thinking about 65 and 70. Now, I know this hits home for me because my grandparents retired a few years ago, and I know that it is quite hard, especially when you're living in one of the most expensive countries like Australia, when housing is unaffordable and most people don't even own their own home, it really makes you wonder how are we gonna continue living our life post-retirement? So let's jump in straight into my whiteboard. So a couple of things here. We know that it's a retirement fund. So what does that exactly mean? How does it get taxed? But also, if you're young, do you really care and why you should probably care? And then if I've got $200,000, what would I do? Now, of course, I don't talk about financial advice. I can only talk about my own situation and provide some entertainment while we learn something new. So with your retirement fund, which is superannuation, you go in and you have your employer actually put money towards it. So what does that look like from a tax component and accumulation versus retirement phase. So in the accumulation phase, which is pretty much, you know, during your 20s, during your 30s, 40s and 50s, possibly even your 60s when you're working, that is called the accumulation phase. Now in this, you'll have income that comes through. So whether it's from your employer or whether it's income that you have through, you know, dividends in your stocks or whether you have property in there as well under a self-managed super fund. Now that is all taxed at 15% a lot lower than what you would have in your traditional personal name or company name. Now, this also applies to capital gains tax. Now, what's capital gains tax? Well, a basic summary of CGT is basically capital gains tax, which is gains that you've made from an investment. So the sell price minus the buy price and holding costs, and there's your profit. On that profit, you then incur a tax. Now there's a long-term and a short-term. Basically, long-term is anything over 12 months, short-term is under 12 months. This is why you need to be very careful when you're going in and trading cryptocurrency under your personal name, as well as trading under your super. So definitely go and talk to an accountant. And I'm definitely not licensed for that. It's way above my pay grade. <laughs> so in your super fund, the taxes work differently to in your personal name. Under your super fund, if it's under 12 months, which is short term, you're only taxed 15%. But if it's over 12 months, which is actually long-term capital gains, then it's only 10%. Now you can start seeing the benefits of growing wealth in your super versus your personal name. But I'm gonna bring it all together soon. The question you need to ask yourself is, are you in the accumulation phase or the retirement phase? Now, for most of us, we are going to be in the accumulation phase and we're gonna be there a lot longer than our retirement phase. Basically, if you're in your 60 to 65 sort of age group, then you're probably gonna be in the retirement phase. But anything below that, you're probably in your accumulation phase. Now that also affects your taxes because this only really applies, your 10%, your 15% only applies in your accumulation phase. When you get into your tax-free zone, which is when you're technically in retirement phase, it's all tax-free. So you can make those gains, you can do some wild stuff, and it's basically tax-free. Again, you've got to look at your own situation. It might be different for you. So now that we know how the tax system works there, we need to see if it actually makes worthwhile sense for us to build wealth from an earlier age. So here, I've got the title, I'm young, so who the F cares? Basically, you need to understand how compounding growth works. It's the eighth wonder of the world. I've got videos here on this channel about how you can make compounding growth and the benefits over the long term. So definitely go and do some more research around this. But when you are younger, you can probably take a little bit more risk. So that means that, hey, you can take a bit more risk when you're in your 20s because you're not really looking at this money until you're 65. Versus if you're like 50, 55, you're looking at retirement, you're planning for that in the next 10 to 15 years, which means your risk appetite is also going to change. So when you're young, it's probably the best time to go out there, try new things. I've said this in multiple videos. Go and try startups, go and try you know that side hustle and then bring it all together in your investing style. One thing I would definitely do is build a foundation of solid real estate and then be able to go off top of that into crypto, into NFTs, and then go into the DeFi space. But if you're young, you've got more time. 
and more time means compounding growth, which as we already know, can provide amazing gains. So let's look at the fact that if we are at a point in our super fund where we've got $200,000, what the hell do I do? Now, again, I don't know what your situation is, so I'm just gonna make up a situation. And for me, if I had $200,000, what would I be doing? Well, you've got a couple of options. At the moment, if it's under a super account, it's most likely in shares and it might be diversified under high growth, high risk, lower growth. You do have a few options, but most likely it's in shares. So some people didn't know this, but you can actually take that super and then have it as a self-managed super fund. Now, why would you do this? Well, it gives you a lot more flexibility around what you invest in and how you do it. For me personally, I did this in 2018. I took out all of my super, despite getting told probably not a good idea. I took it all out and I said, hey, I've got about twenty-three dollars to $24,000 here. What am I actually gonna do? Well, if it sits in shares, I'm probably not gonna do a lot, you know, in the next 30, 40 years, but I can afford to take a bit more risk. And so I took that 23, 24,000 and I put it all into crypto. Now it's probably sitting at a four or five X. And I think there's plenty more room for that to grow, but more on that later. So under my self-managed super fund, I could go into property and I can also go into crypto. Now it does mean that you can also go into ETFs and shares and you can have your own balanced portfolio. Now, granted, if you just have it in shares under a super company, they manage it for you. It's a passive way to do it. Personally, I'm running a personal finance channel. I love this stuff. So I wanna know that each dollar I have makes the best return. It's leveraged to the point that I want it to be. And so I can take accountability for that. But that's because I love it. Most people don't like it, but it's probably important to pay attention to. So let's start playing out a scenario. If I had $200,000, what are my options here? And I had actually no money that I was putting extra into this investment. So that means as long as you keep working and your employer keeps paying you, we're not considering that as part of this actual exercise. Now be aware these numbers are actually gonna be quite wild for you to actually put it into perspective of what's possible over 30 years. And so I would say for you, take an open mind into the next part of this video. So here we go, we'll start with shares here. And we know that an average of seven to 10% is what we can expect. And we'll get both capital growth and we get income. So after 30 years of investing that 200K and nothing extra, we will end up with $1.6 million, which if you on average earn 4%, 5%, I've done these numbers on 5%, you would make $80,000 per year. Now that's actually not that bad because if there's two of you and you had 200 and your partner had 200, you'd be making $160,000 a year. You can retire quite comfortably and that is off the basis. You just put in 200K each and let the market do its thing. The question you've got to ask yourself is how much is $160,000 worth in 30 years. Given how inflation's been playing out, given how modern monetary theory is, it's probably not gonna be a lot. And that money definitely dies if you don't actually have your own place because as we know, rents will continue increasing as well as the cost of living. So let's go into our second option. If we did go down the self-managed super fund path and we go down something more traditional like property, what can we actually do? So with property, we've got five to 10% of leverage return. We know that the market's looking pretty good if it's at 10%, but for this example, we're actually gonna base everything on 5%. We're being conservative. So here we're getting both capital growth and income, just like we did with shares. But here we're gonna use that money as a 20% deposit for property. Now in this case, that would allow us to borrow $900,000. We've got clients that have gone and done this with us where they've gone, okay, I can buy one property for 900 or is there another option? And that's where we've gone down the path of actually purchasing three separate properties at about 300K each on average. And that then returns about 300 to $400 a week. Now you're looking at really good income. So if we actually did go and invest in three properties, let it be there, have the rent continue coming in, that pays off the loan, as well as the employer benefits that come through. You're not having to pay and put any extra money in. That would be worth $4 million. And at 5%, if you earn to 5% yield, that would be $200,000 of passive income. So if you compare the two, we already know that we can get $80,000 per year per person. We can get $200,000 per year per person if we went into property. And so a combination of this could work. You know, you could go down the path of diversifying, but let's take a look at crypto because that is the emerging market. We're looking at shares and property out of the traditional finance world. What's happening with the emerging market? This is the equivalent of actually looking at tech stocks, growth stocks, and knowing there's a bit more volatility. But if you're not having to use this money and you can't actually access this for like 30 years, is there a point for you to actually invest your money into crypto? Well, with crypto, it depends on what you're investing in, but on average, it's 40 to 200% annualized returns. Now, this is going to diminish over time as the market becomes more mature. So we need to keep that in mind. In this case, I've only done it at 40%, knowing that previously we've grown a lot more than that. 
So over here again, we can get capital growth and we can actually earn income. I'm gonna leave a video up here, which tells you how you can earn passive income. And given that the tokens can actually grow quite a bit in price as well, the income that you earn is gonna be far greater than what you get in property and shares. So over here, capital growth plus the income that you earn, similar to the property and shares. But here, after 30 years at 40% growth, you ready for it? $26 million. That $200,000 you invested 30 years ago would be worth $26 million. And at 5%, you'd be earning $1.3 million a year per person. Now, knowing this, there's a few things that come straight into your mind going, that is impossible. That would definitely not work. Those numbers are wild. And that might be the case because we don't know what that would look like. And we know that diminishing returns will play a part. However, knowing full well where we are in the market right now, the adoption that we have, and the amount of money that's actually in crypto is a lot less than where it should be, say in 10, 15, 20 years, I'm placing my bets on crypto. So knowing all of these things, you then have to apply your own strategy and your risk appetite. So what are the couple of things we need to pay attention to? Leverage is important because if we stay in shares, we definitely aren't leveraging anything. If we go into crypto, we're not leveraging anything there either. So we can use leverage with property to actually control a higher amount of asset value. This is what we've been helping clients with under the buyer's agency. So definitely hit me up if you need some help with this. But we know that leverage is going to give us leverage returns. Then we need to consider passive versus active. Now, if you go down the property side of things, it's a bit more active than if you were to go down shares or crypto. That you can just have an auto repeat, just continue buying reoccurring buys and that's fantastic. Plus you earn the income and diversify where you can continue earning that income. Now, finally, diversifying. Diversifying is key because when you're investing into your retirement fund, you wanna be in things that in 30 years time are still around. So if you go down the path of investing your crypto into Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, where there's not really that utility, they may not be around in 30 years time, which means all of your super, all of that retirement fund is zero. At the same time, if you're in shares of a company that you know is not adapting, there's chances that company could collapse. And so if you just go in and mindlessly just keep putting money in, you're probably gonna find yourself in a nice surprise in about 20 to 30 years when that doesn't exist. And that's where I can see you're building out your wealth. It makes a lot more sense because you're taking advantage of leverage, but you're also still in the traditional market and you serve a basic human need of providing shelter. So a combination of these things could actually get you into a diversified position that over the long run will make you a lot more if you take the accountability, make a few steps in the beginning versus if you just follow what 99% of people will do end up in a position where they don't have a house paid off. And even if they do, they're living under the poverty line. I've seen way too many people go through this situation. I personally don't like it, which is why I continue to put out videos like this, just so I can help that one extra person today. And if you have learned something new or your mind's been blown with a couple of these numbers, definitely smash that like button and subscribing to the channel definitely helps grow this community. We need more people to talk about this stuff. So please support the channel and support your fellow peers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.